It's time to get giddy. It's day one of spring camp 2024 for Florida State football. The practice is just wrapped and alongside. Look at me. I'm driving and Jeff's in the passenger seat. Go figure. <laughs> the wildly popular talk show host himself. He is Jeff Cameron, Warchant.com. He is outside of the practice fields. You can see Doe Campbell Stadium in the background. We are live on Warchant TV, breaking it all down. Uh, guests tonight uh, appear via Heisen Liga Law Firm. That's the live chat. That's the guests, all of that stuff. Thanks to Heisen Liga Law Firm for their support. More on them in just a minute. Uh, Jeff, your thoughts uh, after day one of, of spring practice. I'll, we're going to roll some footage as you talk so people can see some of these newcomers. And, folks, I want you to focus on TJ Ferguson at about the 10, 15 second mark of this clip. But uh, your thoughts on, on what you saw day one, the energy, a lot of new faces out there today. Yeah, and I thought they acclimated really well. Things are so much more efficient than they were just a couple of years ago. We say that a lot, but, you know, when you come out here to practice and you begin to see it, you realize that a lot of the veteran players and the holdovers from the last few years are able to pass that along to some of the younger players and so, or the transfers in this case. And so I think they hit the ground running today, Tom. Really nothing stood out. There weren't, it were, you know, it wasn't convoluted. I will tell you, when I say nothing stands out, I mean nothing that was disruptive. Uh, everything seemed to run smoothly. Uh, I, I think that there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, Mike Norvell talking about after the practice uh, that he was really pleased once again with the speed that was on display. I certainly had that in my notes here. I took a ton of notes, and uh, that was right at the top of the list, is that you just see how much faster they are at wide receiver. Um, and really, the other part about this is the secondary's got so much length and speed. The competition, I just tweeted out, uh, Malik Benson's quote after practice, which is that it's very physical. This is going to be a fun camp. And he kind of said it with a wry smile. Malik was on display today, making several great catches, athletic catches, contorting his body, showcasing his athleticism. But it's everywhere you look. So the matchup this spring between the secondary and the receivers is going to be a fun one to monitor, especially because you have a new quarterback uh, and, and you have some guys that can really throw the deep ball. I thought Luke Cromanhawk looked good today, and he was mentioned by Mike Norvell. So right off the bat, people get excited about quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs. Well, those were the guys that kind of stood out today, in my opinion. That makes sense. You know, the pads aren't on yet, so this is more about skill positions, seven-on-sevens. I mean, like, you, you get first impressions just how large guys look in their uniforms, at least in the helmets, compared to the tour of duty for the, for the trenches. Well, that does make sense. I'll get to the quarterbacks in a second, but before we came on the air, you did mention Malik Benson. Look good. Now that we're on the air, you're talking about Malik Benson being a player. You know, the coaching staff has raved about him because he's he's in the facility at all times. For being a one and done player, he seems to have bought in all the way. Is it fair to say that Malik Benson's already one of your favorites and could be a fan favorite uh, this upcoming calendar year? Oh, no question. And he's a guy that really has embraced the leadership role early on here. He talked about how much he wants to do things the right way and that he's excited to, to come to a place like Florida State where, in his mind, he thought this was the perfect fit, partly because he said DJ can make all the throws and he's played in a lot of offenses. And he thought in order to be able to showcase his skill set, he needed a quarterback that could get him the ball anywhere on the field. So he was complimentary today of DJ Ula Ungale's deep ball and, and really just the way that Mike caters the system to, to playmakers. And so... You know, it's funny, Mike has said that all along, but I think he feels like a coach that's got some toys here now uh, with a Malik Benson and, of course, the speed of the other guys. It's just, just everywhere you look. Um, yes, I wouldn't be surprised if he emerged as a leader because he's a playmaker, but he's very mature, very, very level-headed. He thinks very um, – uh, he, he thinks deeply about the questions you're asking. You can hear him and you can see it. You can see the wheels turning. Um, he, he's, he's a very mature player. Sounds like LaMarcus Joyner. That was always somebody who understood the question behind the question. That's uh, pretty cool to hear. Well, th that is also between receivers and defensive backs. You mentioned that. It's like, it's like the shiny toys on a day like today. Uh, but I'm, I'm just wondering what that competition was like, what it looked like, what it sounded like, because those are two position groups that are absolutely loaded. And one would think there are some guys with some tough decisions that are going to have to be made after spring camp is over. What kind of tone was set today between uh, those groups? Uh, and, and how did it feel maybe compared to some of the camps you've been to the past couple of years? The secondary is overwhelmingly arrogant. Uh, it is so fun to watch the way they operate. Uh, after every play that they make, they come together to celebrate. They jaw at the wide receivers. Uh, they taunt. Uh, it was physical, physical for a first day between those groups uh, in particular. Uh, I, I think that's going to be 
a lot of fun to follow. Nothing nasty, but man, there's so much athleticism and length. And I do want to say veteran players like Fintrell Cypress today looked phenomenal. Looked like he's hit the ground running, knowing that he could go make a lot of money. I thought that some of the other guys, I mean, I looked at Azaria Thomas this afternoon and I thought he was the best defensive back on the field. And we all think he's going to have a huge year. So a lot of the guys, Shaheen Brown had a great day. Um, a lot of the veteran players, I don't want them to be overshadowed by the young players who were excited about it. It's very clear that Florida State has recruited at an elite level in the secondary. They've got length, they've got speed, they've got guys who are confident, that play with a lot of confidence, that seem to have veteran uh, sense of where to be. They, they ran the routes for the receivers at times today. Um, but but they got guys that are brash, that feel really confident about their ability, and that competition is going to be intense. Um, yeah, I, I just, at various points of this practice, we were all laughing at the competition between the receivers and the secondary and not mockingly, but rather, Oh, this is going to get spicy. Mm. Oh, that's good to hear. Uh, because again, uh, this is a group I think that's as deep as they've ever been under Mike Norvell. The coaching staff has said that they've been pretty blunt about it actually yesterday at the luncheon. So that competition should be more compelling top to bottom. I think, you know, it buddy from the last year or two, maybe there was, a matchup or three out of every six or seven that you're like, all right, all right, I want to watch this one rep. It should be competitive all the way down the line. As for the quarterbacks, you already mentioned a little bit that Luke Cromanhawk had a live arm. He looked pretty good. Uh, what did you see out of those guys? And obviously they're the ones distributing the rock during these one-on-ones and seven-on-sevens. Yeah, you know, it's a first day, and, and so it's tough to kind of say, you know, it, it too much about it. I, I, some guys played better than others. I'm going to be careful how I choose my words, but uh, DJ looked fine. Didn't look, didn't, it was nothing. I mean, he threw a couple of deep balls that you're like, Ooh, yeah, that's what that is. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you an example. There were two 90 yard touchdowns today. Uh, one of them was from uh, DJ uh, that hit Destin Hill for 90 yards for a touchdown. Uh, and the other one was Brock Glenn throwing a 90 yard touchdown. Uh, and I can't remember who that, Oh, Malik Benson. It was Malik Benson. That's who that was too. So yeah, he had a couple of long passes that wowed everybody. Um, and they were just beautifully thrown balls, not bad coverage, just perfect throws. And, um, you know, I think that's what you're going to see. I think you're going to see a talented group of arms here, uh, that will really compete. Uh, all of them have the ability to get the ball down the field. It's kind of going to be a, a, a theme, I think, throughout spring and really into the fall. I think that Mike keeps referencing it because they lamented that they were not able to take as many deep shots last year. And that's not taking a shot at any of the uh, personnel from a year ago, but we all know they were plagued by injury. So, And the offensive line wasn't consistently good. So I think they felt like that was a missing element of their offense. And I think they're going to really work heavily on that this year because they have the offensive line this year to probably run the ball there's real talent at running back by the way that stood out too uh, i can get into that in a moment but they i think they feel like if they can run the ball that they're going to be able to take some deep shots and play action it's hard to talk about the trenches just now like especially defensively the box it's, it's again they're, they're in shorts uh, and we can get to that a little bit next week one quick thing on the side uh we got a little bit of your palm slash fingerprints i know you're you're holding your phone up outside and, How's that? Uh, and that's great um Brock Glenn, you mentioned he was uh, on the throwing side of one 90-yard touchdown. Uh, his arm looked live in the Orange Bowl. How did he look today? And, and um, you know, I, I know that you don't want to get into too many particulars, but just, you know, this is an important camp, an important year for Brock as well with Luke behind him and then a transition quarterback ahead of him. Yeah, I thought I thought he was a little rusty early. Uh, I thought kind of all the quarterbacks looked a little rusty early, so I don't know that I want to knock him too much. I, I, he's had better days, I'll tell you that. Uh, but he wasn't bad. It wasn't like you were sitting around going, what in the world's happened to Brock Glenn? Um, but yeah, I, I thought he was a little off early and he got better as the better as the day went on. Uh, I think that's true for all the guys. Um, you know, uh, by the way, Jackson threw the ball really well today too. He actually can spin it. I don't want to leave him out of this. In fact, he wowed on a couple of throws. So quarterback room is fascinating. Um, I will tell you if we're, if we're just talking about, and again, you're right to point out the pads aren't on. It's hard to assess offensive and defensive line. But if we're just looking at body types, I got to tell you, man, I mean, obviously, every time we come out here, Daryl Jackson looks like an NFL defensive tackle, and he did again today. But, man, Marvin Jones Jr. is a big guy that can go, and I think they have him listed currently at 258, 259. He's put on some weight since he got here, and he's very athletic and well put together. 
You saw him make some plays today off the edge in terms of speed for that size. So if you're, if you're trying to put some stock into the big leap forward on the front, uh, at the defensive front, and, and what he'll bring to the table, uh, I think he, he's going to add something right away. Patrick Payton talked about his leadership role now. He knows it's time to go. It's time to do things. He's put on 15 pounds of muscle. He's bigger. He's always been long. We call him old batted balls. Payton, you know what he does. Uh, he had a couple again in this practice. But he's now at the front of all the drills, Tom. He's the guy leading the way. And let's be honest, Patrick Payton's a guy that early in his career was kind of a hothead, a little immature, to watch how much he's grown now and knowing that he has to be a leader and seeing him come out here today and kind of lead from the front. That was good to see. That was, you know, he, he looks the part. He always looked the part athletically. Now you see some of the maturity there. That's exciting. I know it gets old, but I, I just think these guys love to compete with one another. It's one of the great things about what Mike and his staff have built. Uh, there's real comp competitive character is a good way to say it. Mm -hmm. Like they don't, you know, they get after each other. Uh, it's, it's a battle and they pick each other up right away and they get back after it. And they're trying to kick your butt the next time uh, that they go against you, but in the right kind of way. Well, you mentioned uh, the running back, so I got to pivot to that real quick, and then we'll get to a couple of questions from folks in the chat. There's a couple of uh, broad-based ones I think you can answer, even though it's only been one day of camp. Yeah, uh, they've got some large dudes at running back. I mean, Roy Dale Williams is built differently. You saw that. Had a good day, by the way. He looks good. Yeah. Okay. So my question about him is now that he's in a football setting, be it not full pads. Yeah. Does he look fast enough at that size? Yes. Yeah. They've got so much at, at, at running back, Tom. I. I I really think they've got a lot of different contrasting styles there. You know, I, I think you've got some bruisers. I mean, by the way, when they were doing special teams, watching Cam Davis run, you know how they do special teams where a guy's got to backpedal and turn. I felt so bad for the people that are trying to turn and run with that dude. Um, he's a monster. Uh, I think they could hurt you in a lot of ways. Keziah Holmes had a big play today. Um, Lucas is a kid that he could get lost behind the line of scrimmage because he's so tiny, but then he gets beyond the line of scrimmage and it's like, He's fired out of a cannon, so it's blazing speed. They, I don't want to give away trade secrets here, but they ran a play, and he was able to kind of <laughs> disguise where he was going to go, and, and there it is. <laughs> well, Philip Seymour, whoa, easy, easy. <laughs> but, you know, what's funny is when, when Trey Benson a couple of years ago, you, it was just so hard to know, it, is what I'm watching good for Florida State or is what I'm watching good for the NFL, good for high-level power five football at the time? And Trey Benson was shot out of a cannon, and then we come to learn later he can run a sub four four forty. So yeah, all that to yeah. say, Jalen Lucas, yeah, that'll work. Oh, that, yeah, that's the same kind of speed. Now he he looks tiny. He's you know he's very small. He's five nine. What you know, they list him at five nine. I mean he's a short guy, but man, when he gets going, he can go. And they have a lot of that speed. I mean you, you really do see it. I they're not going to be lacking for speed. They're not going to be lacking for big playability, and they've certainly got depth. So I, I think it's going to be fun to watch that competition, too. If we're being honest, there's a lot of guys that are going to fight for playing time there. Yeah, on the offensive line, we our first question, the Heist Alika chat, and I'll open this up to become a little bit broader for you, too. It's from uh, Gerald, who wants to know how Lucas Simmons is progressing, and then I'll, I'll allow that to be even a wider berth, like guys on the offensive line, that even though this is not the type of competition that you're going to write a bunch of notes about, who did you see who stood out body type wise, all that kind of stuff? You know, I continue to come back to something that I said before. Again, it's very hard to assess offensive line today. They're not, they're not hitting. So I, I don't know that I really can. I can just see who came in in shape and who didn't. Uh, everybody looks to be, there was no moment where I thought, oh man, so-and-so is grossly out of shape or behind or anything like that. Certainly I can't talk about guys that are limited. Um, mm -hmm. So there'll be some guys in this camp that, you know, maybe can't go full. So that, that'll make it hard to assess. Uh, I will tell you that uh, the Richie kid is athletic for his size. I, I continue to see that. Um, I think Julian Armello looks like he's in the best shape he's ever been in. There, there's something I can tell you. And, you know, we already know they're going to be moving him to guard. So you, you got a guy. I mean, he's got to show and prove this year. Uh, and he's certainly in shape. He certainly looks like he's ready to fight. So that, really not a lot stood out today on the offensive line just because of the nature of the practice. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Briley wants to know your excitement level, one to ten, if you can rate it, from the tone and tenor of day one. You know, meeting, exceeding expectations, just kind of put it together next to some of the other practices and camps you've seen. Uh, how do you feel about this team? Does it make you happier and more excited as a Noel fan? 
Yeah, man, I think this program is moving in the right direction. I think it continues to move in the right direction. I think every time we get a chance to lay eyes on the collective talent when they're competing, we're more and more impressed. And, you know, I'll say that year over year, and it makes sense. Uh, before the 10-3 and 3 season, you know, I was on the air on a regular basis saying this had to be a great year. Mike needed to do something. There was enough talent there to take a big step forward. Now he needed to do it. It happened. Going into last year, we all thought the veterans of this team uh, were talented enough. And then when they supplemented it with, in terms of the transfer portal, we thought they could have a great year. Well, they went 13-0. and 0. Uh, I think they're still adding to this talent level, and they continue to do that. Uh, there's just more of it, more places. There are very few places you look out on that field where you don't see answers to tough questions. You know, I think that's the thing. Like, oh, there have been times, even going into last season, where I thought, you know, if they've got an injury at linebacker, they're in trouble. You know, if they have an injury here, they're in trouble. I, you're saying that less and less. What you're, what you're doing now is you say, you can answer your own question. If there's an injury here, who backs him up? That guy does. What happens to him? Well, if he goes down, that guy does. And they're all good enough. So there aren't too many places where there's a void or a dearth of talent now. Uh, I still say linebacker is a question mark. It'll be a very interesting camp uh, at linebacker. Um, there's some guys that impressed me. By the way, I can tell you this, just body tap wise, uh, I'm dropping my stuff here, guys. Um, but I, uh, 51 looks impressive. I'm going to move this all around just so you know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, people are, are going to be looking into your sunglasses for the reflection of your notes. <laughs> yeah, Tamir Collins, uh, Tamir Hickman Collins, the kid out of Charlotte, yep. uh, is is a freshman. He's put together. He is a big dude. By the way, Jaden Parrish came in here at six one two twenty five. So there might be some coming answers at linebacker, and I've been highly critical there. But I, I saw some body types today that I was like, okay, there we go. Those look like and Cryer. You know, Cryer continues to impress. So. We'll see. I know everybody wants to know about Murphy. I think he looks the part. Uh, he didn't do anything, one thing today that I thought, oh, wow, that's different. Um, but he certainly looked the part. I know it's a guy that you smile about a lot. And, uh, well, before I get to this question, arm fatigue, uh, one to five. How you doing right now? I'm good. I'm actually sliding to my right here because I'm going to try to give you an update on the baseball game while we go live. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Yeah, it's still nothing, nothing. Two outs, but Florida State... <laughs> Uh, nope. <laughs> There's grand total of five hits in this game, guys. This has been a uh, this Between is, the I two think they teams? Up, what yeah, for both teams, total five hits. Jeez. Um we got a nothing nothing score and this game is in the eighth. Wow. Yeah, sorry, I thought there was an update. The fans were cheering. Well, let's hope we hear a loud roar of the crowd because yeah, you are right outside uh, the, the right <laughs> the right field line of Dick Hauser Stadium. I'm right by the fountain here. It's it's a beautiful night in Tallahassee. I can tell you that. They could not have had a better day to come to practice. Um, it is Stunningly beautiful in Tallahassee today. Uh, obviously, you, you see me wearing the pullover, so the, the quarter zip, if you will. Um, oh, you asked a question about my well, arm. I, I, I was fine. about I was to, but then I was about to, but I was taking in the breathtaking uh, backdrop you have there because outside of Williams, there's a quad in Williams where, where I took a lot of classes. That's my favorite spot right there on campus. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just yeah. It's something else. Uh, some A player who's something else that you love to really remark on, especially since the tour of duty, Hakeem Williams, Brett wants to know, uh, is Hakeem as large as he looks in the weight room video? Yeah, he is. He looks like an NFL wide receiver. Uh, he did again today. I think he's poised to have a great year. I'll just keep beating that drum. I think he's a player that has a chance to do special things here. I think ever since he got in shape, it only took him about a camp and a half. And once he did, he looked like a different dude. If he hadn't gotten hurt last year, I think a lot of people would be talking about Hakeem Williams as an emerging superstar. And I don't back away from that after watching him today. Uh, you know, it's funny. There's some young guys here that just, they, they kind of tickle your fancy. You get excited about what they'll be. I don't know how quickly they'll be that. But one of my favorite players to watch of the newcomers is Charles Lester III. Nobody has more fun playing football than him. I hope he's a really good player right away because I want to see him on Saturdays. He loves to practice. He loves to be out here. It's infectious. And uh, I, I talk about that a lot, about the, the overall enthusiasm for work. And, you know, Mike talks about that a lot. He said today, post-practice, you know, there's a lot of talent here, and some of it's coming from other places, but the way we do things is important. And we have to be on our P's and Q's to teach the new guys, this is how we work. This is what we do. We're not saying that other people don't do, you know, a lot of work and don't have success. We're just saying there's a way we do it. It's become our way. And we want everybody to do it that way because it matters to us. And 
I do believe he's engendered that because I saw it from player to player to player all over the field today. That, well, it sounds about right. The question I would have following up on that would be the coaching staff themselves. They pride themselves, Mike, especially about being consistent day in and day out. You know, the same way he enters practice the same way. He interacts with the media with the same three jokes. He does the same thing before his press conference saying, hi, everybody. Are you expecting everybody to respond? Like, he's, he's very consistent. But I just wonder, with a group like this, so much turnover, so many new faces in spring, if maybe it sounded a little different, maybe if not just from Mike, from some of the assistant coaches, there's great continuity here. I'm just wondering if it sounded different or felt a little bit different because last year was about all the guys you brought back. This is a lot of new players have to assert themselves as, as part of that leadership core. No, it sounded enthusiastic. It sounded like they were ready to get to work and they were all pumped. The coaches were loud. The coaches were encouraging. Um, you know, I really didn't notice. I think year over year, you, you, that's the thing that's kind of remarkable, Tom. I, I get the point that you're making, but I really think that they have they have found a way to ingrain culture uh, or a way that they do things which leads to culture being developed, and they pass it on. I, I, I do think it's getting easier. That's a better way of noting it. I think it's just getting easier year over year, no matter who they lose, to find some consistency because the players in that locker room that do return are guys that know what's demanded of them, and they immediately get these other guys in line. Uh, they got guys coming in here that are ready to work too, by the way. I mean, DJ, you see there, he's ready to work. Uh, you know, I, I, I saw a lot of the guys that transferred in all knowing that they have to lead. It's, it, they got to come in here and get right, and they all seem to be ready to go with that. Um, by the way, uh, Landon Thomas is a big dude too. I should have mentioned him mm. earlier. Um, he's, he looked great out there today, 250 pounds or 240 pounds or so, kind of running around looking like a, a bigger guy that I don't know if he's strong enough as a freshman tight end, but, man, he made some plays today. We were impressed last year with the freshman crop, especially a defensive back. You know, they jumped out day one, the early enrollees, and then in the fall, you're like, man, these guys look different than the guys we've been bringing in. You already mentioned a couple of the linebackers, but if you want to take a broad view here, you got Croman Hawk and Cam Davis. You just mentioned Landon, the linebackers. It seems like what that feeling that we had from the defensive back room last year is starting to extend to other parts of the roster. Is, is that fair to say that these look more like dudes just rolling into campus and playing in their first practice? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's completely fair to say. I don't know what that guy's doing driving on the sidewalk. Who's here, driving who's, behind that dude? Dude, it's driving on the sidewalk behind me. It's not 1993 where Pensacola connected. What the hell is that guy doing? I don't know. That kind of was unsettling as you were talking to me. I was trying. I was like, "There's a guy in an SUV driving up here on my back." I'm like, "What do we do?" I'm standing next to the baseball stadium. I don't know what he's doing. Um, maybe he's going to help out with concessions. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah. There, there's it's a seamless sort of thing now, more than it used to be. You'd have to get guys in lines. Hey, listen, I, I got to give kudos today to uh, to a player like Vendravius Jacobs. Uh, who had a good day out here today and, and at one point was praised by Mike Norvell. Um, Deuce Span had a nice play out here today, was praised by Mike Norvell. A lot of those veterans are leading, as you suspect that they would. Second-year guys looked like they were savvy veterans. Uh, and the freshmen hit the ground running. Uh, there's some guys that are in over their head a little bit early on that you could tell just kind of not knowing where to go or how a drill is run. But that that's different than coaching effort. That's different than, you know, having a – to teach a guy what it's like to be coached hard. Nobody, you, you know, you see that sometimes in freshmen. Guys that come here, they were the best player on their team in high school. They're not used to a coach yelling at you. Hey, Mike Norvell will find you on day one and yell at you. And in fact, in a weird way, the bigger the star you were in high school, the more apt he is to find you and point something out that you're doing wrong. And every time I saw Mike do that today to some of the bigger names, the freshman names that are coming in, you know, whether you're a high four-star or a five-star guy, they, they all handled that. They all handled that well. Uh, so that's important, and that's what leads to some of that seamlessness. We'll get a uh, couple more questions in a second. I'll give you, if you need a break for your arm, we're going to mention our, our fine sponsor here of the chat tonight here on War Chant TV for the spring football kickoff show. Attention, Florida. Are you a victim of an auto accident? That's uh, the whole state of Florida. We introduce our live chat sponsor, Heisen Lika Law Firm, dedicated to representing injured clients statewide. If you've been in an accident, call Heisen Lika Law Firm at 813-803-0733 for a free consultation. Remember, there's no cost to you unless they win. Your interests come first with Heisen Legal Law Firm, the name you can trust for justice. Call 813-803-0733 now or visit HeisenLegalLawFirm.com. 
Heisen Legal Law Firm, your advocate in times of need. Home office Tampa, but serving the entire state of Florida. So looking at some of the footage here again on Warchan TV, to those of you that are locked in right now, I see uh, across the multimedia platform over 1,300. Uh, please feel free to hit the like button underneath the video. Subscribe to Warchan TV. It's absolutely free. We have Mike Norvell's press conference. We've got player interviews. We've got footage, tons of footage like you're seeing on the screen from practice more than is before your eyes right now on Warchan TV. It is uh, the place to be tonight as Florida State football spring camp is underway, and we are excited about that. Uh, we've got a couple more questions in the chat before we call it a night, Jeff. But first, I like to call it the bar stool test and not that brand. I'm just talking about when you sit down at the bar stool at a certain place in the north side of town, or maybe you go to a certain place like Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, and somebody asks you, So, how do we look? Who do you like? What do you tell that person? Like, what are some of the guys that come to mind first? You've named a lot of players, but if you're just sharing the overview, oh, you're going to love so and so. Who's that type of player? All right, I can give you some names. I jotted them all down today, one by one. By the way, can you see the fountain behind me? Can you see that fountain behind me? Um, Kai Bates, look good. Lawrence McCoy, look good. Uh, Landon Thomas, I already told you about him, looked good. Uh, Durajaye is gigantic and moves well. Looked good today. Cypress, of course, everybody knows he looked good. Um, I thought he had a great day, by the way. Uh, Charles Lester III, I'm going to continue to mention him. Somebody I should have mentioned earlier, Jalen Brown looked good, looked fast. Daryl Jackson's a hoss. Benson, great hands, caught everything thrown his way. More developed than I expected him to be is uh, Tamir uh, Hickman Collins, the linebacker. Jaden Parrish also kind of surprised me in the way that he was put together. All the running backs, every single one of them looked good. Uh, there's talent here, guys. Let's see how well it comes together. Let's see what they get accomplished in this uh, this spring camp. Um, it's not going to be because of a lack of talent that they have a hard time. Uh, lots of things can spring up over the course of a football season that um, make make wins harder to come by. Um, but but you know you got to have talent for you to have a ceiling as high as Florida State's, and they have it. They have it. They've just continued to add to the ledger. I'm impressed, uh, but. Again, it, no padded practice. It, it, it's just it's guys out there looking good, running around. You know they were great athletes in high school, and they look like great athletes here. Um, but it's to the standard, and that's the big thing. I've covered this team for 26-plus years. I've seen the really, really good ones, the all-time great ones, and everything in between. And so I certainly feel like I have a pretty good feel of when they have talent and when they don't. Talent's not going to be a problem this year. Okay, so that leads to a question from Briley. Very nicely, it leads to it. Were we more impressive on day one of camp this year than we were day one of camp last year, in your mind? I don't remember. I, I, I'm going to be. I'm going to be really honest, Briley. I don't. I don't remember if I felt. I just remember we knew they were a known commodity last year. Um, you had a quarterback that had been here forever, Benson. You already knew who he was. Uh, I, I think I remember. You know, again, Johnny Wilson was here. I just, I don't know. I, I felt like you already knew a lot last year about the defense as well. I, I was impressed last year, and they went 13-0. and 0. I wouldn't this year than I was last, but I, I would also say that I'm not less impressed. There are er – how about this? There are areas of this team that are just flat out going to be better than they were a year ago, mm -hmm. and there are question marks about this team that might not be as good as they were a year ago. Linebacker is my biggest question mark continues to be they had a veter veteran presence last year um i just worried that after the first two uh had bethune gotten hurt um you know i, I felt like we we were, we were going to lack some experience at that point um but we ended up we ended up having all of our guys stay healthy there for the most part so it didn't really matter uh but i i think that this secondary i don't know how they're not going to be really good i'll just tell you now i think the secondary is the strength of the team there's just too many options too many talented options for them. I don't know how they couldn't be great. We've got one more question before we do that. Everybody, remember, you're running out of time if you're a Warchant subscriber. Warchant.com subscriber. It's taking me out to Warchant Day, as Director Ben put it in the graphic. Today only, Warchant subscribers save 25% on all FSU baseball items at Garnet and Gold. That, of course, extends to the website garnetandgold.com. So if you forgot, head over to the Tribal Council right now. There's a pin post from Gene Williams giving you your code for 25% off of Garnet and Gold. All baseball items, 
25% off. That's just one of the ways that you benefit from being a subscriber to Warchant.com. So if you're on the TV side, check it out. See, this is how it pays. It's just a dollar for your first month. So you could turn a profit here in terms of the savings with what you get at Garnet and Gold. Remember, 10% off all purchases for Warchant.com members for Garnet and Gold all year long. So pretty cool. Uh, last question is about the weight room, Jeff, and this is probably a good way to, to end it. Who looks like they've packed on exceptional muscle compliments of Coach Storms and the nutrition team, asks Lee. Patrick Payton's a lot bigger than he was. Fans are going crazy. Fans are going crazy. Give me a second here. I'll be able oh. to update in real time at the ninth inning here. Are we in the ninth? Give me a second. <laughs> here we go, guys. You get a two for one. This is awesome. I wish that happened when I was reading the Garnet and Gold thing. That would have been perfect. Let's see. Okay, well, they're excited because Cam just wrote the single, and that brings up Tibbs. We're in the bottom of the ninth of a nothing-nothing game. Wow. Tibbs coming to the plate, uh, and Florida State, that's just their fourth hit of the night. But there's nobody out running right first, bottom of the ninth, and arguably your best hitter, James Tibbs, is at the plate with good speed at first. So let's hope we hear him scream again, guys. Okay. <laughs> I'll walk back over to my, my stoop. If it wasn't for them playing, uh, you know, batters themes and stuff that could get us zinged by copyrights, they'd say, just go sit in the bleachers and let, let's get, <laughs> let's get a, a live reaction show here from the bleachers. Yeah. Um, you know, Cam well, Smith. In, in, the modern, in the modern world, it's not uh, odd for people to walk by and have somebody shoving their own camera in their face and speaking as if they're in a movie. People don't even look at me funny, so I could just do this because everybody thinks they're in a movie now. Um, so, oh, so anyhow, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, as far as uh, who's put on weight, oh, well, listen, I just don't know how anybody comes in as a freshman and looks like Cam uh, Davis does. Uh, 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 I, I don't – how? <laughs> I, oh. Okay, hold on. I'm still, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still listening. There's, the fans are getting loud. Ooh, that sounds loud. Golly, guys, let's see what happened. <laughs> <laughs> live reaction this is jeff's journey look at that doke in the background what a glorious evening my goodness okay what, let's see what happened we have a okay it was a shot to why are they showing that well it's uh, I, that's gonna be your final right did i miss this or is this the bottom of the eighth i think the Knowles just scored could be the bottom of the eighth. Check check your line. Can you see the line score on the big scoreboard? I'm trying to see that now. You guys could probably tell. No, they're still playing baseball, but I think we just scored. I think it's one to nothing, Florida State. Uh, it's it doesn't the the it It's the bottom of the eighth. That's correct. Yeah, I just okay. So that. there we go. It's one one nothing, Knowles. There you go. So they have just so scored. you know, Kurt. I, I'm going to give you this too while, while you walk back to your place another time. Kurt says this is some of the greatest War Chant TV I have ever watched. So thank you, <laughs> thank you for this. <laughs> Outside yeah. of Dick Hauser, as Florida State baseball has taken a one nothing lead in their quest to go 19 and 0 to start so, the season. I but believe that's a sack fly from Tibbs. Okay. Um, that gives How the hell did Cam get to third? What? That's I, I must have missed a guy get on base earlier, and then okay. Cam hit a single and moved the runner over to third, and then there was a sack fly, fly to deep center, and it was Tibbs, and that scored the run. Nice. Um, nice. So one nothing Knowles in the bottom of the eighth. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Uh, but, it, yeah, there's some, there's some big dudes out. Oh, I just uh, – Daryl Jackson's a freak. I said it last year. You can get to play. And then the Georgia game was so silly. Um, so I don't, you know, people are probably like rolling their eyes, but where do you get a good look at that dude? He's just, he's even bigger and stronger looking than he was. Josh Storm's done a good job, man. These guys look the part. There's a lot of them out here that you look around and you're like, holy moly. I mean, even like the 220 pound guys, you're like, that's a ripped dude. That's dense yeah. muscle. That's, you know, so they're in shape. Hey, but there wasn't anybody there. Uh, to be honest, there was nobody that I went. Oh my God, what's happened to him? Hakeem Williams going from last year to this year has been the one consistently that I think most people are wowed by. That makes total sense. Again, I'm pulling up the the video real quick, uh, so so T.J. Ferguson can be shown again because for an interior player, yeah, he's he, a monster. He's a monster. Now, if you combine that with Armello, who you said is in great shape, and Richie Leonard, who looks like a giant human being as well. Like, there's yeah. a ton of mass. Keandre Jones, a forgotten guy, but another giant. 
there, there's a lot of mass there. So a lot of size uh, for the offensive line. I think they're going to be able to run the ball. You need your tight ends. Morlock looks bigger. Uh, he looks bigger. That's good. He's going to need to be. Um, he actually made a great catch today in practice. Um, wonderful route. Still has that speed for his size. Made a really good catch on a great throw from DJ. So final thoughts. Uh, I don't think we can keep you to get all three outs of the ninth inning. I, I don't know that we can make it that far because the Knowles might keep scoring. Uh, yeah. But final thoughts. I know that we'll discuss it at length tomorrow when you host uh, the Jeff Cameron Show, aptly named at 1 o'clock here on WarChan TV and in 93.3 Real Talk Radio in Tallahassee as well. But uh, you're walking out of day one. You're saying, okay, exhale. What did I see? What, what do you take away? I saw length and speed and athleticism in the secondary that, to me, has to be elite. I mean elite on a national scale, elite as in this plays in the SEC, this plays in the Big Ten, this plays, period. This is elite. Uh, they're really good there. I saw depth at running back. I saw a lot to be excited about at wide receiver. Um, it's a faster team, guys. It is a faster team across the board. If you, if, you, if you think about the secondary that I'm talking about, and then you hear me talking about the speed, the newfound speed at wide receiver, uh, even adding speed at running back beyond, you know, Benson was fast last year, but now they have a couple guys that can really go. Uh, maybe a couple gadget guys. It'll be fascinating to see how they use them. Um, but this is a faster football team, and I think a team that's a little bit deeper, uh, a little bit deeper than they were a year ago. That's the way I would describe them. I think this is a deeper team in terms of the depth of talent and a faster team. Makes total sense, and we'll break that down okay. tomorrow. I'm excited to take a look at all the footage. Again, Warchant.com, Warchant TV has everything. Photo galleries, full footage from uh, Aslan Hajavandi, director Ben Spicer also shot some stuff from the defense today. You've got gobs of stuff to consume, and I wish we could vamp this just long enough to confirm that Florida State goes 19-0, but I think Jeff's arm is going to fall off. So, No, uh, I'm going to give you one last – I'm going to give you one last live. Look at this, man. He's the man of the people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you one last go around here. Fans are standing in their seats. Billy Squire is rocking Hauser. Um, God bless Billy Squire. <laughs> here we go. We've got, yeah, there are two outs, and they've decided uh, to make a pitching change. Yeah, we'll play, so, yeah so Stetson's making a a pitching change currently. And uh, and so there's two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Knowles lead one to nothing. Drew Faro is at the plate. Uh, and as this young man warms up, you're right. I'm not going to be able to make it because he hasn't thrown his first pitch yet. So um, Knowles do have the lead, bottom of the eighth, 1-0. Okay. Enough. So coming up on Warchant TV, we've got uh, the Warchant wrap. Corey and I are outside of practice. They did the wrap. you got Wake Up Warchant coming in the morning with more coverage. I can tell you now there will be a recruiting chat too because Florida State is bringing in a ton of five-stars, high, high four-star caliber players this weekend to campus. There'll be a recruiting chat tomorrow here on Warchant TV. you got the JCS tomorrow with Jeff and me at 1 o'clock. This is the time. It's time to get down with the Warchant. Uh, make sure you hop on over to the website if you're not a member. It's one dollar for your first month. Give us a it's shot. It's just a love buck. It. It's just it's a buck, everybody. Let's go. For the love of God. And then if you want some baseball stuff, as they try to go to 19 and 0, they got three outs to get tonight. Uh, remember, head over to the Tribal Council to get your discount code for 25 percent off at GarnetandGold.com. Our thanks to Director Ben behind the scenes. Our thanks to all the War Chan staff for putting together this great footage, uh, the great Q&A that we had tonight with Jeff. Thanks to Heisen Legal Law Firm for sponsoring the chat. Jeff, enjoy your walk to your car. It looks like it just couldn't be better. It's gorgeous here, man. We've got 50s, uh, sunny, no humidity, Tom. A one to nothing Florida State lead. A great first day at camp. Uh, I think everybody should have a smile on their face if they're a Noel. That's true most days, but I think it's especially true today. This was fun, buddy. It's good talking to you. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. I'll talk to everybody tomorrow. Sounds great. That's a great way to send us off. Good night, everybody. Talk to you next time on War Chant TV.